weight loss program in the Washington, D.C. area. And today we're going to talk about the usage of oral serotonin supplementation in a medically supervised weight loss program. As an internal medicine physician, most of my patients, when you talk about aging with them, they're thinking about things like wrinkles and hair loss and all the external aesthetic issues involved with aging. But from an internal organ standpoint, diabetes mellitus, atherosclerotic heart disease, arthritis, cancer, stroke, peripheral vascular disease, sleep apnea, all of these age the internal organs dramatically. And what is at the forefront of all of these? It's obesity and weight issues. I probably don't have to tell anybody in this audience the national scope of obesity being an epidemic. And right now, obesity is America's largest health concern. 67% of the American population is overweight, and 35% fit the criteria of obesity. It's actually estimated by the year 2030 that 35% of the American population will have developed diabetes mellitus. Childhood obesity in and of itself is probably one of the most growing health concerns in America, and for the first time ever, the preceding generation has less life expectancy than their parents' generation by six years. Americans are spending $50 billion a year on weight loss efforts. The causes of the national epidemic of obesity are way too numerous to put on any form or any sheet of paper, but here are some of the issues. First of all, especially in down economic times, a lot of people reach for fast food places as a source of nurturing their families. You can buy a whole lot of calories for a small amount of money. The concept of dual working parents, is there anybody at home responsible for bringing adequate nutritional concepts and planning meals for the family? Stress and stress-induced eating has been present for a long period of time, but even now, especially in current times, with the stress of the financial situations. Starting in the 1960s, there was more and more use of the high fructose sweeteners used by companies to make the foods taste better, and along with that, the obesity rate kept rising and rising. The association of soft drink companies and schools. Every school, every high school has in their corridors either a Coke or Pepsi machine. Why? These companies help support the school sports teams. And in every turn, children and our youth are reaching for sodas. The advent of the internet and cable television. The internet has put our kids in front of, TV, of the internet, their computer, and TV sets, leaving very little time to go out there and do the exercise needed to have adequate weight loss long term. Restaurants are also fighting over each other in, in providing higher, higher portions of foods to get the business. Now, the federal government and state and local governments are recognizing the problem, but there's been very little intervention on their part. Also, in medical school, very few courses are devoted to the prevention of issues. It's more the treatment of disease states. So nutritional background and education is lacking both in medical schools and in residencies. Insurance companies also big to blame. They recognize there's a problem. They'll pay for medications such as diabetic and hypertensive pills, but will not in a lot of instances cover weight loss programs. As far as the chemical contribution to obesity, there are a number of neurochemicals involved with the eating disorders and eating behavior patterns. What makes us feel, feel tidy after a certain portion of food? What makes us crave those sweets and carbohydrates? When people are under stress, they feel compelled to reach for food. Why is that? Again, chemical issues involved with several neurochemicals and peripheral chemicals. I want to talk about the chemical serotonin. This has a large role in carbohydrate cravings. Serotonin is found in natural food sources, such as fruits. Bananas are a high source of serotonin, and nuts. Inside the body, serotonin is made from the amino acid tryptophan. And serotonin itself is broken down by the oxidating enzymes monoamine oxidase and aldehyde dehydrogenase. The total body content of serotonin is only 10 milligrams, but the overwhelming majority of that is found in the GI tract. As far as clinical conditions associated with serotonin imbalance, 
carbohydrate cravings are linked to serotonin deficiency. Also, the lack of feeling satiety is linked to serotonin imbalance. The mood disorders, such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, panic attacks, all these have been linked to serotonin imbalance. PMS and premenstrual dysphoric disorder are also linked to serotonin deficiency. Migraine headaches and the cranial vasodilation that occurs are linked to serotonin imbalance. Fibromyalgia and other chronic pain syndromes are linked to serotonin imbalance. And some GI issues, most notably irritable bowel syndrome, are linked to serotonin deficiency. How can one chemical present in such small amounts in the body be responsible for so many diverse clinical effects? And the answer is there are different receptors in the brain and body for serotonin. There's at least four classes of serotonin receptors and different subclasses of each receptor. The 1A receptors are involved with mood disorders, such as panic attacks and depression, and also some eating disorders, such as bulimia and anorexia nervosa, are linked to imbalance of serotonin at the 1A receptors. The serotonin 1B and 2C receptors are involved with eating disorders, such as increasing appetite and carbohydrate cravings. The 1D receptors are involved with cranial artery, vasodilation, or constriction. And the serotonin 3 and serotonin 4 receptors are involved with GI motility. There are a number of prescription medications on the market that work indirectly via serotonin mechanisms. The selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, such as Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil, and Lexapro work at the 1A receptor sites, but also some of the other tricyclic antidepressants, the older ones, such as Cinequan, Elavil, and Tofranil. The anti-anxiety medication Buspar works by serotonin mechanisms at the 1A receptor site. The dual serotonin and norepinephrine prescription medications, such as Effexor and the newly released Prestique work by serotonin and norepinephrine mechanisms. The PMS medication Serafem, same uh, chemical formula as Prozac, fluoxetine, works at the 1A receptor site. The migraine medications, Imitrex, Zomig, Maxalt, these are serotonin 1D receptor agonists. They attach those receptor sites and activate those receptors as if they were serotonin themselves. The GI motility agent Reglan works by serotonin mechanisms. And the appetite suppressant that was removed from the market about 14 years ago because of heart valve dysfunction, fenfluoramine and redox work at the serotonin receptor sites. From a dietary supplement standpoint, a number of natural products work indirectly by serotonin mechanisms, such as St. John's wort, whose active ingredient hypericin works as a partial monoamine oxidase inhibitor, 